This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Hey, hi. Um, I'm Reiko, and I help with the WordPress meetup and WordCamps, and we've been using WordPress. <clears throat> excuse me. For probably about six years, and um, I did this talk mainly for people beginning and wanting to figure out what they need to do to make their website good. So it's probably real beginner, but we'll go through it quickly and hopefully you can pick up some pointers. So I'm at RacoB on Twitter, and we have two companies, TRB Design, which does um, video and WordPress websites, and then the toolbox where we teach technology to non-technological people. And we sometimes run um, WordPress beginner workshops and intermediate workshops through the toolbox. So what has your website done for you lately? That's the question that a lot of people ask me when we're looking at their websites to, to redo them or to create a new one for them. So uh, what are the latest trends? And is your website showing its age? <laughs> what ways can you tell that your website's working for you? People go, well, I have a website, but I don't know what it's doing, or why, why do I have a website other than it's just a brochure on the web for me? So we're going to quickly talk about some of these things. Some of them are obvious, and some of them um, are just things that people don't always think about. So branding, organization, a little bit about content management, analytics and SEO, um, a little bit about social media, um, the rise of usage of tablets and phones and why that's important to think about, and website maintenance and security. So with branding, the basic point I want to make is, does your website look like your brochures and business cards and social media? All of them should look alike, and you shouldn't have greens and blues on your Facebook page and have a website that has you know, purple and pink. You know, very basic, very, um, you want everything to look similar so that when people see it, they automatically know, yes, I'm in the right place. Organization. How is your website organized? Um, you should create effortless and predictable navigation. If you're very creative, if you're an artist, you may want to have something maybe a little bit different, but for the basic people and businesses, you want navigation that's predictable, that people know where to go and know where to click. Um, it just will speed people moving around your website. Um, on your website, does it have one call to action on every page? You should think about that and try and say, what is this page doing? What is it talking about? And at the end, do I have a call, of, call to action? Do I have them go someplace else after they've read that page? It's very important if you want to keep people either moving around, contact us. Um, is a simple way to do it, but you know there's a lot of different things you can ask them to do after they've come to the end of your page. Content management. Can you make changes to your website on your own? Is it easy to add functionality? And can you control your search terms? All these things WordPress can do for you. WordPress is 23% of the web, and it's an example of a good CMS system. Um, analytics, the basics. Do you know how many people are visiting your site? Um, where are they coming from? What are they doing when they arrive? All that you can glean from analytics. I'm just going to speed through this. So 
the obvious choice, first choice would be Google Analytics. It's free. Um, it can tell you where your audience is coming from, what's going on with your site, if people are leaving right away, where they're coming from, what browsers they're on. Um, you can drill down in a, to US, state, city, where people are coming from. So it's a good start if you don't have analytics yet, you should definitely put some analytics on your website. Some of the plugins to consider um, for WordPress is Google, Google Analytics by Yoast. Um, I'm not sure if they have the dashboard yet. He is working on getting the dashboard on so that you, in your admin area you can see a portion of Google Analytics within your WordPress site. If this one, the Google Analytics dashboard for WP does have that in your admin panel, so it's nice when you log into your site to be able to see a little bit of your analytics reminds you that you're supposed to be looking at that. And another one is Google Analytics Tor. I don't know how to pronounce that. But it'll give you just a little bit of your Google Analytics right in your dashboard, and then you can click over to drill down and see more. Um, next topic is search engine optimization. Um, SEO is a process of affecting the visibility of a website or a web page in search engines. It's either natural or organic search is what people are looking for. And with WordPress, what is it, 90 percent of the SEO is built in. The structure and everything is very much what search engines are looking for. So there's not a lot you need to do. Um, do you have a blog? Google likes new content, so it's always good to have a blog or news or something going on where content will change on your site, and it will also add keywords that people are searching for, hopefully, while you put more content on your site. Um, is, your, is your website easy to emphasize pages and posts so that you can um, specify keywords for those pages. There's plugins that you can use for that. Yoast has a great one. I'm just jamming through this. Um, social media. Does you, do you connect with your social media pages on your website? Um, there's, you can do it like in your sidebar or footer to connect to your social media but also to um, make sure that all your posts and pages are easily shared, that you can share it via Facebook, Twitter, whatever. So that's another thing to think about when you're putting together a website. Is social media connected to it? And you, um, so these are little things underneath your posts where you can share it very easily when somebody's reading your site and they say, oh, I want to share this with somebody or share it on my Facebook page. Um, so the other thing is, are you promoting your social media on your site? So right at that little example is just the top bar of your navigation, being able to quickly go to your Facebook page or Google Plus or Twitter, or you can subscribe and follow. You can put something like this in your sidebar or footer. Okay, so next is the rise of the usage of tablets and phones. Um, as of January 2014, 90% of American adults have phones a cell phone, 58% of them have a smartphone, meaning they can look up web pages and such. 32% um, of American adults own an e-reader, and 42% of American adults own a tablet computer. So people are not looking at your site any longer just on a computer at home. They're taking it with them. Mobile devices account for 55% of the internet usage as of last January. So a tremendous amount of people are looking for your website 
on phones and tablets. And so you should be aware of that and make your website either responsive, where it shrinks down as people go to different devices, or consider a mobile site. With WordPress, um, it's very easy. These days, most of the newer themes are responsive. So um, it's easy to make your site responsive. People that have mobile sites, it's like a separate site that has to be updated separately from your regular website. So um, unless you have specific needs, a responsive design works really well. So this is just an example of on a computer, um, on a tablet, and on a phone, how a responsive design looks. Maintenance and security. If, if it's your site or if you're managing sites for people, make sure you have a plan. Um, a plan to update how you're going to update your WordPress core, your themes, and plugins. Um, make sure that you have a way to back up the site, both um, the database and the files, and know what to do when things break or a site gets hacked. Um, just recently, I've been contacted by a number of people that said, my site's down, I don't know why. Their site's been hacked. and takes a half a day to go through and really clean that up for them. Um, or you can use a service like we have at TRB Designs. We just started a maintenance program for people with WordPress sites. So if you're building sites for people and you don't want to deal with that, that's something that we can help you out with with your clients. A couple of plugins that are good for security. Um, these are things that I use. I use the iTheme security um, for backing up database and files, um, Backup WP, which is free, or Backup Buddy, which is a paid one through iThemes is really good. And I just added this slide. Um, if you're searching the web and you think the site is WordPress, you can go to and find out what theme it's using. Um, and it's what WP theme is that .com. And you can go there and you, it will tell you what theme it's using or if it's a child theme. Um, another way to do that is through a Chrome app called Page X-Ray. It also tells you what plugins are being used. And if you're not sure what CMS is being used, there's a Chrome app called Chrome Sniffer Plus that will tell you whether it's a Joomla or WordPress site. So that's my presentation. <coughs> Any questions? The clients whose site got hacked, can you tell a little bit more about that story? Well, one of them, the um, hosting provider, no? Before you continue with this question, I would just to jump piggyback on this question. The people that had their sites ha site hacked, was there admin pages, like, did they have any recapture or, or um, any kind of security feature on the admin site? No, That's they did not. Okay. Um, the one was taken down by the hosting company saying, you know, you have bad code and you have to do something about it, and they didn't tell them or give them any clue what they had to do about it. And um, I looked at the themes and the plugins, and they looked fine, so I reinstalled WordPress uh, on it, and that seemed to clear it up for them. So um, that was one of them. The other ones were a lot simpler. But anything else? How often do you see sites getting attacked? How often do I see it? I don't yeah. see it very often. It's mostly people contacting us to say, something's wrong with my site and I don't know what. Um, yeah, so you don't see, oh, you have these things, and so they're, they're not saying they're being attacked at all. Oh, yeah. When we 
when we put on something like um, I theme security and it tells you when somebody's trying to get into the admin we get we probably have maybe 50 60 sites on that and I get notices all the time that they're they've been locked out of the admin so people are trying to get into WordPress sites Marine? When content should be updated? Mm-hmm. Um, well, they say that you need about 300 pages to start getting indexed. So if you're not at that point, then you should be blogging daily, weekly. Um, after that, weekly, monthly is probably fine, but um, you really want to build content up on your site so that you're found by a lot of different keywords. So, you know, to build that up quickly, you really need to blog more. It also depends on your audience and your goals. You can, you can have one blog post that's really, really relevant and everyone links into it and get just as much authority. Um, it's really hard to do. It's a lot easier to just put out regular quality content different than everything else out there. You don't want to just kind of add to the echo chain. It really depends on your business, your goals, and your audience. Yes? Can you say the advantage of 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 the advantage the one-step install versus a uh, manual install? I think it probably depends on the host and how much they like keep up. Because one, I think some hosts will do one-click installs where then they continue to update everything for you. But then some, it, it just, they don't do anything after that. So it probably depends like on host by host basis. What, what, what we see that's more important is a lot of people, you know, they build their site and they, they go through all this work and they, they build this type of site map and they do all this work and they, they get, um, they, they finally get it that you know, each page should have a specific goal, why that page there, what you want to do. And they build this nice site and they spend a lot of time and energy and, and uh, money on it. And then you know, they don't do with it, anything with it. They don't keep it up. So we, and we see that far more often than people have really worked their site to keep it up. And with WordPress, one of the big security things about it is with security is doing all the maintenance. You know, when you when you have a when WordPress updates, you do the update. When uh, when your theme updates, you update your theme. And then you know, all of, all of the plugins. Too. So when you have all that going on, if you don't have a plan on how you're actually going to do that, that's going to be a big security risk. In there. And then you have brute force attacks and all that other kind of stuff. Some of these plugins that Rick was talking about are really important that you can have on there, whether or not it's WordPress that will do some things and be tight when people are hacking. Because we, you know, we look and all of a sudden we'll see, we'll get 50 emails of, of a site and when somebody's just trying to log on and it's just, it's not because the site's any, you know, big target thing, it's just WordPress and WordPress sites are, are just um, a target. And so you, you really want to have some of that stuff back in there. That. So it's more than maintenance, it's not keeping it, it's just you've got things in place to handle that. If you haven't already, check out um, our Google Hardening WordPress. There's an actual article on the WordPress Codex and that goes through all the basics of things that everyone should really be doing to kind of you know, create a good solid base from a security standpoint for WordPress. And on top of that, you know, check out um, some of the other plugins that give you kind of added security, whether it's the replication um, or some kind of distributed network. <coughs> We go, I notice that when all of a sudden there's comments on the blog, the requested comments, and the blog is like six months ago, and I know I have to update that all my plugins. All my plugins. Mm -hmm. And actually, mm -hmm. Kismet's really good for that too. They yeah. yeah. It doesn't do it automatically. 
You can set yes. a total limit on that if you want. You can also turn off um, common phone posts after a certain date. So you can mm -hmm. say common phone will open for the month and then close it. I'm asking people referring to rebar in the Philippines. There's another question. Yes? So the first one is a website. It's what WP theme is it dot com. Um, I know on our the hosting company we use, they install the WP cache all on all of my sites. Um, when I'm building them, I turn it off. When people start to use them, I turn that on. Um, I haven't, do you have any suggestions? This, this could be a whole other talk. Yeah. Uh, you know, W3 Total Cache is a popular plugin um, by a local guy, really, really popular. Um, on top of that, the, the theme is a big part of it, depending on uh, you know, how the theme is built, um, you know, how, how many assets it's looking at, how many images you have. You know, there are a lot of factors that go into PHP on top of your host. Um, and, and that's a, like, like I said, if you a whole or talk, you can get into Memcache, SCDN, and all that stuff. If you, uh, if you come down to the next comments, uh, we have someone talking about like, site performance and all that. That's on uh, March 10th. This is the date, and actually, and then there's the gentleman's name who he kind of specializes in making sites and then runs TikTok. Perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. <laughs>